plasma and the ionization of mercury gas. Is it safe? Do you know what that is? We're gonna be showing you some tricks to do with plasma balls. Yeah, let's go. Welcome back. We are continuing the series on plasma balls. These things are seriously cool. The more I learn about them, the more I love them. This channel exists for you, for science, and for fun. <laughs> so what are you waiting for? Click that subscribe button. We have new stuff coming out every single week, and it's all super cool. So let's show them the effect first that we're going to explain. So this is a normal fluorescent light bulb. We'll bring it close by. And it starts lighting up. Yes, it does. That's so cool. Yeah. This is a continuation of a series on plasma lamps that we've made over the last couple of weeks. So if you're interested, go check those out. I'll link them somewhere up there or down in the description or something like that. So plasma ball, what is it? Tesla coil. Low pressure globe filled with inert gas. The electromagnetic waves excite the gas and create plasma. Obviously, this is a simplified version of what a plasma globe actually is but we've made a detailed one a couple of weeks back, kind of going deeper into what it is. So go check that out if you're still confused. So what's in a fluorescent light bulb? Well, a fluorescent light bulb is simply a low pressure glass tube filled with a mercury vapor and then coated with a phosphorescent coating. That sounds really similar to a plasma globe, right? So what happens with a normal fluorescent light bulb is it gets screwed in, there is a high voltage current flowing through that glass coil. And that glass coil then excites and ionizes the mercury gas, and then that triggers the phosphorescence on the outside of the coating. So what happens and why does it happen when we bring the fluorescent light bulb close to this plasma globe? Why does it light up? It's not because we're completing a circuit. Because we're holding on to the plastic, there's no way that it can go through the coil and into the ground. The truth is fascinating. That's a Tesla coil in the middle of the plasma globe. And that Tesla coil is shooting out high voltage and high radio frequency waves. We only see it because it's in a low pressurized environment with lots of inert gas. But those high energy, high frequency waves, they're still shooting out in every direction possible. We just can't see them. When we bring a fluorescent light bulb close to it, those high energy waves penetrate through the glass and ionize the mercury vapor inside of the fluorescent light bulb. The closer we get to the Tesla coil, the stronger the glow is. That's so cool. That is cool. The same thing works with a tube fluorescent. Now this is hard to see, so we're actually going to turn out the lights so you can see this a little bit better. As you can see, it's lighting up, even though it's not even touching it, but that's because the electromagnetic field is existing beyond the scope of the globe. Now here's one other cool thing. Because the electricity will always want to take the path of least resistance, if I were to grab it right here, oh wait, I guess you can't really see that. Here, I'll hold it like this. So, hold it like this. It lights up the entire, the entire stick. But if I were to grab it halfway down, it actually turns off past my hand. That's because it's wanting to travel down through my hand to the ground. And it does not travel past. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. It's so cool. Oh. Plasma is affected by magnetic fields. And I have a super strong neodymium magnet here with a crazy amount of force. This thing really hurts when you crush it between with your fingers between it and another magnet. 10 out of 10 do not recommend. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to show you why magnetic fields do not affect the plasma in plasma balls. So here we go. So we'll create a stable current and then we'll bring a magnet close to it. There is virtually no effect. So why is that? The magnetic field does not deflect the plasma in any way because this is being created by a high voltage alternating current. And because it's going back and forth so many times, it doesn't have the time or the speed necessary to be deflected by a magnet. Sad. 
This has been a shorter episode, but we just really wanted to show you how cool that is. Thanks for watching. We have new stuff coming out every single week, so make sure you stay tuned. And we're going to get back into more intensive science experiments soon. Yeah. All right. See you guys. <laughs> have fun. Stay safe.